uh, there's a theory called eternal inflation, which is a theory that, and it's actually the most popular theory, I think, at the moment for what happened, for why the Big Bang is the way that it is. Because it's got some very special features, the Big Bang, which we could talk about. But inflation is the idea that space, space time was around before the Big Bang and it was expanding extremely fast. And it was doubling in size in the most popular of these theories every 10 to the minus 37 seconds, which is point naught, 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 with 37 noughts, one of a second. So it's an unimaginably fast expansion. And then the idea is that draws to a close, so it quite naturally sort of dies away and the expansion slows down. And all the energy that was taken, that was causing that expansion, sort of gets dumped into space and heats it up and makes particles, and that's what we call the Big Bang. And those theories, the slight extension to those, um, say that, that that slowing down just happens in little patches. So most of the universe, the overwhelming majority of the universe, is still inflating at that insane uh, sort of speed. And the just little patches stop, and they're big bangs. So you get multiple universes, a multiverse. It's called the inflationary multiverse. And we are in one of those bubbles. And that's one of the more popular theories. That's another one. I mean, the, right now, I'm aware of what you're saying. I, I, I can I can sort of visualize it in some sort of a graphic form, but it's incomprehensible. Like my, yeah. my mind doesn't it doesn't have the capacity to expand the this a sense of distance and size to that that grasp. Is this because of just the way we evolved? We evolved here on Earth to deal with the space that's in front of us, and now over the course of you know in industrial civilization and education, we're now grasping these concepts that are so alien to the reality, the the tangible reality that we exist in every day. I'm sure that's right. Um, the the you know, even very simple things, like you go back to the Greeks, so Aristotle and the great, you know, very clever people, but they thought the Earth was at the centre of the universe. Uh, why? Because it feels like it's at the centre right. of the universe. It feels like we're not moving. Um, and that's quite a deep point, actually, in physics. It's like, why is it that we're flying around relative to the sun very fast at whatever speed it is, 18 miles a second or something like that, and the whole solar system is going around the Milky Way galaxy and so on. But why is it that we don't feel it? And um, the Greeks quite naturally said, well, because we're at the center of the universe. They also said everything falls towards the Earth. So therefore, the Earth must be at the center. It's, it's natural. Right. And, and actually, it's quite a deep uh, thought to, to understand why it doesn't feel that we're moving. It, uh, you have to go all the way to Einstein, really, for someone to take that very seriously. And he, what he said, actually, he said, well, this, um, th there's a great little explanation in Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time about this that the idea that you can't tell whether you're moving or not demolishes the notion of absolute space. So if we think about space, if I said space to you or most people, I suppose, you'd think it the way that Newton did, of a big box within which things happen. And that's got to be, the, that's a natural picture of space and the universe, isn't it? It's a, a thing in which all the planets and galaxies are placed. But um, in, in the brief history of time, Hawking says, well, imagine bouncing a ball. So we bounce a ball on the table now, a tennis ball. So I drop it and I catch it again. Um, so let's say I drop it and it takes a second to bounce up. So in that second, the Earth has moved about 18 miles or so in space around the sun. So you could ask the question, did that ball return to the same place in space or not? And the answer is, you can't answer it. You, it does from our perspective, but from the perspective of someone watching the Earth go all the way around the sun, it went up by and caught it again, it had moved 18 miles. And then from some other perspective, it would have done something else. So the point is, you can't say this is a point in space. It came back to the same place because that just depends on your perspective. It depends on whether you're watching the sun, the earth go around the sun or whatever it is. So, so Einstein said that means there's no such thing as absolute space.